guys, this is NYC Open Data Meetup. And we have event very often, every Monday, Thursday. So I teach half of the workshop. I teach R, Hadoop, Python sometimes. And today is about R and Chrome, how you can script data automatically every five minutes. So I just want to mention we have the anniversary party coming up. This is the male bunny owl, female bunny owl, kiddo bunny owl, hobbit bunny owl with black and gray color. And the last is the best beach version with cocktail. Yeah, so basically you just pin your name there. I will take the eye out. Like I can say Vivian Mind Data. So we will ha have cake, have drinks. Hope you can make it to the party. Also, um, I offer a lot of intensive class during weekend. So the meetup is all free. The five dollar is for your dinner, and the the membership five dollar is for like join me software. So you can you can see my screen better. And we also put a lot myself. Okay, put a lot of effort to make every workshop reusable. So even if you didn't, couldn't make it, you're sick, you can still study it on your own. I'm recording on my desktop. I'm recording by the video camera, camera which is really expensive one, 900 bucks. But I, we, we do event twice, at least twice per week, sometimes three times per week. Because I have another group called New York R user group. Um, Sunny. Like how many of you have been my meetup before? Good. So this side is all new friend. This side is all old friend. That's awesome. And Donna and Harrison took my R class before. And a few of my class also list here. It's like all Sunday weekend class. Um, it's very intensive and you are required to do project demonstration. And Harrison did Facebook research in her final day. And he's owning my he's only me a blog about how he did it. So other students already submit their project. So this website is called NYC Data Science. If you click on the meetup, like material are archived here. Like if you want to learn Hadoop, I did two Hadoop events there. Like how to configure your first cluster on Amazon, how you can run your MapReduce on Amazon. If you click on that, and I have the slide available here, and my desktop recording, my video camera recording. So it should be like 100% reusable. I tried my best. If it doesn't work, let me know. I will figure out something else. <laughs> And I also sometimes do hackpad because I need to copy paste the code. You can follow along. So today we're probably be fine. And a few links I mentioned during the session. Um, so if you are interested to, to learn more or share, like teach a workshop at this meetup, write to me, talk to me. I'm very happy to share your talent with that community anything you did really well like these are the class we're offering node.js python um i like r a lot so i've offered more r class like how you can dynamically generate reports like if you want to do a report for all the school in us you do it once and generate all the rest part we also do web application by shiny um have you heard about shiny if you didn't, um, I already did workshops there. So you can click on Meetup and look for Shiny, this one. So I have the slide showing how you can do it step by step. And I ask people who took the workshop to do similar work. Like they need to submit something right after the workshop. Those are the applications you can make by R and Shiny. You can, grow your, you can grow your Christmas tree by R. You can say how old the tree is and, and your age. It matters a lot and whether you're drunk or not. 
So this is submission from their members after they took my workshop. So they basically did their regression. They upload the file to the website and the draw regression and the summary of the regression there by Shiny. It's very short code, just here. And there are extra learning material you can follow along, like all the online classes. So we also offer D3GS. Uh, I think we have offered three free ones. So because we have so many things going on, all the topics will be covered like from time to time. I taught about 24 art workshop already. That's my art machine learning class starting this Saturday. This is the art beginner class starting in June, the end of May or June. And Hadoop class. So if you are interested, um, that's it. Uh, let's get started. So, have are there more people want to do join me? Uh, I didn't see your Josh, Jim, Jessica. Awesome. Bring your laptop. Awesome. Can everyone hear Vivian right now? I know that the, the fan is on and the room isn't usually set up like this. Can everyone hear Vivian and does she need a microphone? Yeah? yeah. What do you think about that? So I'm posting the the slide link in, in the comment section. You can grab it. Oh I'm posting my local one. Sorry, I have a. Uh, I already upload to the website, so it's here. <coughs> Could you quickly introduce yourself, like what you're good at and what do you do, so I know which level you're at and how fast I can move. Starting from you. Do, what do you do? I see. United Nations. We're doing another watch, um, meet up soon with United Nations, like how they do the scientists in Africa. We, oh. we invite officer from UN. And the data scientist team from Southwork. I think you might want to check it out. Uh, I'm Sami. Uh, I'm working for a digital marketing agency. I stayed at the two models. I recently did the choose factor of the meetup because I want to show it in the uh, anniversary party. and. Christine was our top five members who came to their meetups. I just scrape all the data about my meetup. Hey, I'm Philip. I work for a financial services company. I use R quite a bit. Awesome. Do you want to teach R sometime? How to do finance by R? Quant do you use Quant mode? Sorry? Do you use, what package do you use? No, I actually, I don't really do finance. Uh, it's more data mining. Okay. Uh, I'm Wael. Uh, I'm a data scientist at Central Reach. It's a uh, social analytics company. And I do most of my work is machine learning. Wow, you're an expert. So please help me t tonight. Uh, I'm Josh. I'm a graduate student in linguistics. And I use uh, R to do things with corpora and look at data from experiments. So. Do you use and any packages in R to um, do natural language processing? Not in particular. Cool. Um, my name is Matt. I work for a financial data company. Um, and I'm interested in learning more about using R or Python or really any language to just do uh, rapid analysis. I like how it's going in five or ten minute intervals, which describes uh, this process. 
Uh, why it's five minutes? Or yeah, you said the city, the city bike data. Yeah, city bike is. That's right. So I mentioned how to continue with monitoring. Cool. Mm -hmm. I have one that uh, I work for Amazon. I do statistical analysis and reporting for them. Um, and I'm trying to learn. It's my seat. You can take it. Okay. I'm trying to learn R and I'm just like, what type of class? Amazon have office here? Yeah, we have a lot of people here actually. I feel like Amazon does that. There's so many people. Because you always send people to take yeah. interview in say, Seattle. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I see. Awesome. Everyone love Amazon. Welcome. Hi, um, I'm Jessica. I work for a charter school as a data evaluation associate. Um, here because I want to um, learn R and learn other sort of stuff. For you guys who want to learn R, we have a R chart um, workshop coming soon. It's bridging R and D3JS, so you can make awesome visualization results. So if you click on here, there. The sec second line there is the link, our charts. So, super awesome one. And we're doing remote hangout session because the professor is in Canada. I will be the TA, so help you out. Go ahead. Um, thanks, uh, I'm data analyst at Hill. Um, and I'm just trying to Do you know Roger? Yeah. Oh, he took my last class. Oh, did you? Yes. My last R beginner class. And he wrote a report about how you can grab all the Facebook like data yeah. to analyze the branding relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Different brands. Yeah, he showed me some. Cool. Yeah, I'm worried I also went to go. I'm actually a private user for that team. So. A math user. Yeah, I said my next team. I see. Welcome. Yes. I'm Dan. I'm a data scientist at Math Tech Company. Um, you both want to work in Math Lab. Good thought, because if you search for R, R is what the best paid skill these days. R, the best paid, seriously, I'm not kidding. R skill attracts the highest salary. We, we did MongoDB, Hadoop, I'm going to do pick MapReduce a lot in the next three months because I'm promoting a really, really nice Hadoop product in the class, and it's awesome. Would you mind? Mm -hmm. What tool do you use? Did you come to the previous Hadoop workshop? OK, you can find everything there. I'm Norbert, I'm a data analyst at a financial service company, but I love a lot of data mining on the side of Python and all relational, non relational data. I'm getting nervous. There are so many experts here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dee. I'm still a first year graduate student in doing statistics, and I use R very often, so I want to explore more about R. Um, are you studying the city? Uh, I have I hire a lot of intern from Columbia staff department. Yeah. Cool, Jerry, the most charming Jerry. He's the reason why we can sit here and enjoy all the good drink, all the good food. The content is the reason why you guys can sit here. The content. I saw it's me. Well, it's you. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, you make the content. The content validates the group, and then. We like to host groups at Hotworks. We like to, um, you know, we like to kind of support communities that that we're aligned with and that are making cool things and talking about new technologies. So welcome. Um, I'm Jared from Hotworks. Hi, Yuri. I'm, uh, I'm Yuri. I'm a hardware designer out on Long Island, and I'm a very special for data and arm. Um, Monitors a couple of the sites in Toronto, sites in uh, New York City. So I'm helping him monitor it, and at the same time, I'm using R to analyze all of those monitoring data. So I'm kind of like self-learned R to uh, beginner level. 
Harrison. Hi, I'm Harrison. I am a business analyst at Divide. It's a tech startup in Chelsea. And I have been running uh, R for the past few months, uh, as Vivian said, I took for a beginner class. And I did a final presentation analyzing my Facebook friends around the world, uh, looking for all the love connections between married couples, engaged couples, single people uh, by continent. And I found that uh, I didn't have any married couples in Brooklyn, but everyone was engaged there and had it. I didn't have any engaged couples there, everyone was married. So his algorithm is called OKCupid. Yes. <laughs> this is the picture from their graduation ceremony. So, and he's crazy. He brought 10 people to the graduation ceremony. His parents, his fiance, his fiance's parents, his boss, his colleagues, <laughs> in order to get passed, because we do vote. You need to get two third vote to pass their graduation <laughs> ceremony. Good strategy. Would you mind? I I did how you can turn SAS code into R code workshop. But not many people sign up for that. You didn't, the first batch didn't do project demo. Do you want to come back? I want to, I'm thinking of doing something, uh, like, first I want to study up more, but yeah, I'm thinking of coming back. And like, I want to, my schedule is going to open up uh, after the summer. So I definitely want to do something new. Awesome. So you're up for a project demo later, right? Yeah, you're going to put me, you're going to make me stand in front of everyone? Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, okay. Would you mind? Welcome. Hi, sir. Uh, I'm Baruch. Uh, I'm in Sabre, and I'm one of the uh, massage business students. Um, I just fall. And I'm on the arm. Cool. Uh, I'm in the business. I'm in the business. I'm in the business. I'm Elliot. I run two companies. I run a hitch fund. Also, I run a company called you know, Labs. Use, use R for back testing over the finance side and miscellaneous uses for R on the, uh, on the mobile app side using your formatting data or compressing it down so the, the app operates pretty efficiently. And you you used to be a regular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It means it's getting busier and busier. I'm Sean. I work for Cool. Welcome. My name is Clarence. So I'm in this whole thing in one. Um, and it comes up one. Welcome. I'm Giuseppe. And I work at Citigroup in the data quality and data governance team trying to build a data quality platform for Citigroup. And I'm here to learn R because I'm doing a site project. And uh, I need to pull data from you're very lucky. I'm going to offer five weekend really intensive scraping class. You can scrape all the web data by R, by R and Python. Great. I'm Ryan, I'm a data analyst for financial services. Uh, I went to one of Vivian's classes on R and 
Thank you. Give me some up today also. Oh, okay. I'm out of here. No more meetups. <laughs> Hi, sir. We're missing you. Cool. You see, I want to hire people to cover different R packages and R of different library in Python, like Jingsum, NumPy, Pandas. So really in-depth teaching about each packages. So talk to me if you're really good at Python. Cool. Um, so I think all of you have grabbed the slides. Right? It's the, in the comment section of the meetup. Um, so let's get started. This is a, um, it, this work has two parts. First part, we did the analytic part. We also did the Ruby on Rail part. So it's a real app now. So if you go to the site, it's actually on the last page. I'm sorry, last page of the site. So I can say, I want to go to Grand Central. Click. Actually, this this Haruku app was put up with by one of our members today, and he found the repo um, from my GitHub account and put this up and sent me the message. Say, oh, it's up again. Um, if you you don't have much visit on Haruku, your app will go into sleep. So, I'm so glad he put this up again. So basically, this app will grab your geolocation data from your browser and find the nearest five stations for you and tells you how many bikes will be there in five, uh, 15 and 30 minutes and tell you um, all, the five des all the five bike stations near to your destination and so you know which station you should go to return your bike. You won't go to a station, there are no spot available. So that's the goal. Does that sound interesting enough? Useful? Cool. So um, today I'm not going to touch anything on Ruby on Rail. It's all our work or scripting work. It's made by our data scientist team at my firm. It's, Vivi uh, it's Vivian, myself. Ibo is our lead data scientist. And he is ranked to top one zero one percent on Kaggle.com. So, have you heard about Kaggle? It's most popular competition platform for data scientists. So, I he did a presentation last year in my meetup about how you can do the Amazon employee challenge. Basically, when a new employee enter your firm, you need to give him access to hard drive, database, all kind of resources. So Amazon was trying to automate the process so people can get to work s sooner. So uh, our lead data scientist was like top 10, top 120. So he shared the algorithm how to do it. And if you look back to the meetup history, you can find the slides. It's always in the comment section. Sometime, I don't remember if I archived this, I need to look back. Um, so, what else? Go back to here. Um, yeah. Um, I will first mention what you can find about city bike, all the data related to city bike, and how to scrape it, um, and try to model it. So, if you go to city bike website, it is. Which one? Ooh. This one. It's citybikenyc.com. They recently start to share data by months. So if you go to their system data page, you can find they actually zip all the file by months. But you can also find their real time data. It looks like this station citybikenyc.com slash stations slash json 
So it's the latest five minutes data. Um, I has I has been I have been scraping this website since August last year. So I have more data. Um, they have some basic factor about what's going on, like how many trips over the last twenty five hours, accumulative trips since lunch, how many miles people have been using city bike, how many annual members they have now. You know, it's funny these days people compare their city bike keys color because it's light, if it's light blue, it makes you a first batch. So how many past people have purchased last day, yesterday? So if you don't want to scrape, you can download the data from there directly. Oops. Um, do you know how many stations in New York City? Can you guess? It's 331 of miracles. And they start from the, the, the range of the ID should tell you which borough they put the bike because they have Brooklyn um, station. It starts from two or three. And uh, people have been complaining a lot, lot about they couldn't get bike and they couldn't return back. Like so that's why we started to do this last last November. Um, this example, if you click on the visualization on their website, you can find like visualization of the site. How many bike available at this moment? Um, I random pick one and took a snapshot. But if you click here. It will um, bring you to the system data page. And we want to look at the JSON file and scrape this one. So I'm really, I really love R, so I'm going to do it in R. Mm, I'm using a package called RJSON require function actually load the package after you install the package and you copy paste the link to our json url object and use a function called from json file equal to this link and if you do the names you can grab the column names from this json file and execution date so we are transforming the messy json file into data frame or matrix or data frame is like Excel sheet. Each row is like one observation. Each column have the same type. So you can copy paste this, this, and this, and you can get the same result. So I will show you how to do that. So I do, I already have all the code because my slides is written by R. I use uh, I use Knitter and Slideify to make my sites. So I abandoned all my code in their chunks. I can just run the code from there. First chunk, second chunk. So you should get the same result as based on the time. The time will be different. How many of you have R Studio installed? Cool. Good. You guys should be able to do this. If you don't have R Studio, find neighbors to help you get one or just look at his screen. Where is this code? It's in the slides. Did you open up the slides? Yeah. It's page eight. Yuri, you get it, right? Yeah, I'm already done. Can you help Jared? Jared? 
come on. Oh, sure, sure. Why is the JSON data there in the first place? Is it is it a public service? It's or just a file format. Does the does the website need it? No, it's it's a cleaner data um, format. Usually, people offer either XML or JSON. It's it's like tree structure. So. Um, each block, if you click on their query bracket, it's one station. They, they have the same structure, like ID of the station, how many docs available there now, how many bikes available there now, what's the longitude latitude of their uh, station, the but, middle of their station. But the graphs, for example, from the website, are they generated directly from the JSON that's hosted on the same website? Yes, yeah. you can do it in Shiny very easily. We did this workshop so twice Chinese, earlier. So they use Shiny for their graphs? Um, they didn't use Shiny, but we did two sessions about how you can grab data from all the bike sharing system around the world. Like you can do Barclay data, you can do city bike data, you can do the Boston data set. You just pick on which location you are pointing to and generate the same type of visualization right away in two seconds. Have you get the same result I did? Cool. Good. So, so next, um, if you if you just use this format, it's really hard to work with because it's a list. Um, next function I form, I grab the first element from the list and so I can like downgrade the data frame from list to its element. It becomes a data frame right away. So list is like land filling. You can you can put all kind of element in a list. It can be a vector, it can be a matrix, it can be data frame. So this this JSON file is a list object once you load it in. But this list only have one element. That's why we use double bracket to grab the first part. Once you look into the first level, the, J, the data frame um, become a data frame right away. So you should be able to do the same thing. Are we good? Cool. So next, we are moving to S supply. What does S supply mean? Can anyone answer my question? Harrison, you know I'm calling your name. Yes, I am feeling. S supply means that you're uh, going to take in the data and you're going to run some sort of function to aggregate. Okay. So because um, previously you have seen the JSON file. The different IDs like have their own block, right? You want to aggregate based on the object you care about. Like this one, I'm aggregating how many docs will be there. Bikes will be how many available bikes. And I put them together by a data frame function. So it turned out really nicely. So we clean them up. Those are the steps, how you can clean up a JSON file right away. You need to see what's the new object you're getting from the JSON function and bring it down to like data frame level and aggregate them. Sometimes you don't need to aggregate. It all depends on what data you are getting. Are we good? Cool. Did, how many of you get, have get this one? Have go through the step? Yeah, sure. What's the question? So, um, the JSON data station, is that a vector? Is that a, is that a list or what? It's a data frame. So, last step, I did a names. So, I can grab all the column names. It's 
it's four of the options here. Make sense? Cool. Okay, so um, next three slides because um, all the data is hosted on the server. That's why the command is Linux system based. If you are using Linux, uh, you can run them like step by step as I have here. Basically, what I'm doing is you you are starting the rsyslog services, so you can trigger the cron. What cron does is you are telling cron how often you want to do something. Like I want to scrape the website every five minutes. Please do it on the back end. And in the end of the day, I will take a look of your work. So you start the Chrome by Sodo services. And you can grab to find this pro PID from those functions. Um, since most of you are using Mac, so I have the Mac version. Um, starting from here. So it's from page 17 to page 19 is about how you can cron something on your Mac. So I want you to try with me. So start your terminal. And do a sudo touch. Do you know what touch do? Yes, because um, you don't have a, this file name. So touch give you a brand new file. So if you copy paste from here, sudo touch, and it will ask you for the password. And if you do a list underneath of the etc folder, you should be able to see the file now. I can open it up by vi. So next step, I'm doing vi, sudo vi, etc cron test see and I'm asking you to copy this two rows into a file if it's your first time to use the I I can show you quickly how to do it so I'm doing sudo let me remove my file first remove the I slash no remove etc folder cron test Oh, permission denial. Sudo remove. Okay, so I don't have the file anymore. Touch. And the sudo bi open. So copy paste this to row. What it does is it corresponding to um, minutes. I believe it's minute, minute, how minute, hours, day, months, and walk day. So, and little slash means every minute. If you put slash here, it's every like one hour. So I'm asking the text file print text cron into the text file every minute. So if you, one minute is the minimum union you can do with cron. So if you go back to the slides I had about Linux, this one is saying it's similar. So, um, I'm asking the system to run the command from 23 to 7 a.m. Divide by two means every two hours. Little comma here means I want eight o'clock. So this task will print a sentence into this file at those um, time point. That's how you can write this syntax about the Chrome. Make sense? And if you want to Chrome 
every half hour, it's more tedious because you need to specify in those two ways. Like, um, oh, I think this is about 90, 90 hours, 90 minutes, so one and a half hour. So midnight, one, 30, three, four, 30. So it's 90 hour, 90 minutes. You need to put both of them and add what you want to do. Like you want to print something or script something in the Chrome job. Any question? So you would uh, put maybe call R to automatically scrape the website? Yes, you can word. say, I want to run R. This would be run R. So let's see how it works. I'm, I'm going to be I, and, and I press on I so I can change my mode into insert mode and copy and paste it here and do comma uh, escape comma wq ban so it's safe let's double check okay it's here awesome um, and it's safe we want to add this task into chrome tab mac use chrome tab you can copy paste it here it's added. You can check the Chrome tab now by doing Chrome tab dash L. You should be able to see the content you put into the file. And let's wait for a woman, see what happened. Using the I temp text.txt. It should have nothing now because it takes a minute to generate something. Who can come up with a really good joke? to fill the time. Come on, I have I have really cute bunny owl stickers. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, let's check later. I don't know how long is a minute. So after you do this you want to make sure once you finish with it, you want to remove it. So let's wait for like 10 minutes before we remove it. Dash R means you want to take it out. And double check by doing a dash L. So list all the Chrome tasks you have there. Yes? Um, sorry, I'm having trouble setting up the, um, the automation, like the, on slide 12. Uh, what, what error did you get or any hint? So I did the first one. Mm -hmm. um, and after asking prompting for a password because it's pseudo. Um, um, the first command doesn't give you anything because it's doing touch. Touch means I, I'm creating a new file. Oh. Before this, can you do this one? Like sudo vi this file? I'll try. You should be able to do it if the touch uh, run successfully. Cool, so you're on the right track. Okay, we should have some, some something there. Uh, did I go to the wrong directory? Is that why? Oh, it's TMP. Uh, oh, sorry. It's dot. See, we have something. Four minutes has passed. So, if you go back, you can actually like print some hints to remind you you should go to work or go to bed and open the Chrome file automatically. You mean the, this file? Oh, you, you are in the VI, right? Are, are you still in the VI mode? Are you still in the file? Oh, yeah. So you do es escape, ESC. Escape first and uh, do comma. So you will see little tiny comma in the corner. Escape first, it's changing your editing mode. And the type WQ, 
or Q to quit this file. Yuri, can you help him? Can you help her? Okay, it works. So let's remove it and double check. It's gone. No, no cron tab for Vivian now. Did you make it work on your laptop? So this is where you should change the eco have a good dream too or eco testing. You are saying please the R script run those two files for me. First scrape file, second write the file into the MongoDB or Postgres for me. It's the same thing you would be running on your R Studio. Any question? I did. It, because those come from my server. So I did those three slides today to show you how you can do similar things on your Mac. But it should be like Linux function run on your server. Or if you can buy a Raspberry, 50 bucks, you can scrape it by the 50 bucks Raspberry. It's cheaper. I don't run those from my laptop. No, I, was, I was asking if you created those R scripts at some point this last year. I don't. But it's really simple because the JSON file is already there. Like everything I just showed you, it's the sleepback.r. And right into Mongo, it's just one line of code. Yes? Trying to change it. Yeah, it's uh, not saying it's already being. You cannot scrap it. I'll close your terminal. Restart. It sounds like a mode thing. So close it and uh, do a sudo vi to the etc folder temp again. Share these scripts that, uh, the yes. The citybank the R is already here. The the writing to the database part is next coming up. So, um, should we move on, or you have more questions? Mm -hmm. Harrison, do you remember the the link for the city bike I give you in the homework? City bike Postgres. Oh, yes, I, I Can you post it to the meetup link? Sure. I have a web version, so it's three months Postgres Postgres dataset. You can use it using this command. You can try them out. This version is for server because it takes this username, password, host. Number you need to run this on the server. You want us to change the name? It won't work. I, but I'm giving you a Postgres file, so you can use it on that one. So how it works? First, you you this require connecting R with Postgres. Um, in order to communicate between different software, you need either ODBC or uh, IDBC, some kind of portal to connect them. So this is one of them. R have different type of package to handle different interface. We, R can connect to RSQL, 
MySQL, SQLite, um, Oracle, SQL Server, or MongoDB. So you first establish the connection through the drive. If you don't have those, it's fine, because once you specify the name of the file, the Postgres file, it will work. It's like I'm connecting to you. After you establish the connection, you need to send your query over, set what kind of thing you're, you want to fetch from the table. It's the same thing like you do um, Postgres and enter the Postgres interface and do select from the software directly. And R will save the result in the object called RES. It's a short term for result. And you, you can fetch them. Because my server, I use a really, really small server, which only have one gigabyte memory. Um, so I only fetched 10,000 record every pool. And I want to mention because fetch is like a pointer. If you do fetch 100, it will move the pointer from 1 to 100. If you fetch again, an n equal to negative 1 means you want to fetch all the rest of the record. It will start from 101 to the end of the table. So R keep track of where you stopped from last fetch. Yeah, right back. You need to refetch. You can bring the uh, point, uh, pointer back. But you can save it in the data frame and say which row you want to access, right? right. So if this database of yours has all the historical data just where you can go after you? Uh, that would be 8 gigabyte. So I have a small one for my student to do the homework. It's only like one half, one and a half months. And it's, I random pick, I sample them, so. Um, so most of the time, the t table will keep grow up and grow up, so it will be bigger than your memory. If you have Postgres on a server, you can dump the file into a file called data.csv using those commands. So first go to Postgres and do station all and dump them by the select function. You get all the data and save to CSV with headers. Can you explain that part again? Yes. Part? So this is like if you use SQLite, you type SQLite and you enter the SQLite programming environment. You can look up all the collections, all the tables available there. And the table name called station underscore all and you do copy from here to here. This is the query part. And once you have the query, you can save the file and you can specify whether you want the header or not. Make sense? Yes. Um, Harrison, have you? Yes, so I think uh, you you post to the meetup comment, right? I it's, uh, right so it's here. Is. If you go back to today's oh, event, Harrison post a link. You can download a sample. Oh, Once you click on that, you can see a development dot SQLite three. Um, yes, you can save it. Seriously? It was 200 megabytes. Okay. Okay, so any more question about how to work with post Postgres? Yeah, in this example, you're, you're querying the, uh, the database that just wrote to the, the R script in the last slide. This is not R script. This is. So you're querying that database that you wrote out to? No, the no, no. This is not related to that at all. Because I'm saying, if you use R, you can only dump 
very limited data. I'm showing you what's the direct way just dump everything into CSV file, huge CSV. This CSV can be 16 gigabyte. Because it's painful to write tons of small files, you just want to dump them. But on that point, every five minutes that you've been running it since you know, last year, you've been inserting that into the Mongo database? Um, I, I tried them in Mongo, Postgres, and SQLite. I just want to see which one is more lighter. Um, this one, Postgres is trendy, so I try, try this out. Cool. So um, usually it's, it's really hard to handle data type. Data type. So in R, you can use a function as POSIX, post, how to say this one? POSIX? POSIX? And give the format year, month, day, hour, minute, second to force it to be the same format. If you don't do if you don't do this step, usually it will take the date string as a string type. You won't be able to do like compare like minus one day, minus one hour. And you won't be able to tell whether a day is a work day or holiday. Because those attributes come with the data type. Um, so in this example, I use time, available bikes, available spots. So once I load the data.rda, actually I can give it to you now. So what? this one. It's a just example. So let me upload to the FTP. You can change the file name to the web link name or save it on your local folder and change it to the directory. You save it. Oh, it's already there. I already uploaded this. Date underscore RDA. So you can change the slides link to different one. Copy paste and do data underscore all dot RDA. RDA is a R data type. You can save it right away. So where do you want to change the delete the citybike.html and put the file name here. Re -re yes. With without quote. So change the citybike.html into data underscore dot rda. And you should be able to run hat. And know whether it works for you. Uh, yes, so you have the slide link, right? Delete the H city bike HTML and copy paste this part without code. So we'll be here. It works? Cool. And we want to explore first 10,000 record. We want to predict the ratio of the bikes in the station. So the ratio comes from uh, free bikes divided by total available docks. One dock have one bike. So we calculate the ratio like this, adding the available bikes and the free docks together. We use bikes divided by total. And because the time interval 
between our data point is five minutes. So we want to check what is the trend. Can you see some obvious trend? What's your guess? Why this day is very different from other days? We can. What is the x and the y? Or this is the data point. So each day have two hundred eighty-eight data point. This is five day. You are saying those three days is raining? The other one, the two low ones. But this ratio is how much, how many bikes available? The same station, the same station. It's possible. Or it's some special holiday. Okay, so we actually see some patterns. It's just not telling us in, not enough, right? If we have the date information, like exactly which day it is, we can look back, like any news, or it's mapped to a holiday or vacation. <coughs> Before we do anything, we want to check the data quality is good. So we check whether there are any missing data. We find we actually find one. Why do they have missing data? Sometimes there's the station is broken or they can't take out the bike. So there's always something going on with the data set. So we take it out by saying, Oh, find me the index of the missing data. That's the NA dot position. And next I'm saying, please um, take out this data set for me and I will check again. So the last line give me false. That means we don't we no, no longer have any missing data there. We clean it up. This the second line is saying, oh, the position one hundred is missing. So I bring one hundred one up. You're deleting one row. And we use a package, st. Um, so let me show you the detail of STL. It comes from the time series. So STL season seasonal decomposition of time series. So basically, you have choices like what window you are looking at. Here we are specifying the window is uh, PER, periodic. And it, if after you fit this time series, you should get three column back, seasonal, trend, and reminder. And I, we have little plot how it look like. This is how the data look like. This is the visualization. The black one is the original one. Red is the seasonal pattern. And trend pattern. Green is the trend pattern. We draw the uh, three columns there. We want to say how we can come up with a model as close as the data look like. If we can monitor, we can do the same thing, we can tell what, what's going to happen next. Right? I'm saying, do you a priori specify the seasonality, or does it try to detect the seasonality? It's tried to detect the seasonality. Okay. That, it seems like it's getting confused. Which part? The green lines. That's the trend. And that's the trend. We haven't mixed them yet. Okay. I just um, print them out. I just plot them. The plot those two columns. Can you show the previous slide again for 10 seconds? Yes, sure. Okay, before that. <laughs> okay. This is how the data look like. This is how to plot them. 
and how to plot both of them. Please, expert, help me explain why we are having seasonal entrance. Why do we have separate components? We have four, three experts in the room. Sir, would you mind? No, I'm not a time series guy. That's the case of a <laughs> Any time series experts? Yes. Cool. So next is I want to add them together and see how much I can uh, approximate this pattern. This one look much closer than previous one, right? This is the previous one. This is the mixture of both. Mm -hmm. It's a lost. And how many of you have membership with City Bike? Seriously? Only two? <laughs> Three! Oh, awesome! So, how often do you use them? Do you use them like every day or for work? Or? I think like two weeks ago there is a visualization about how many female and male is riding city bike. They color different station, the nearby station by their gender ratio. Like the conclusion is most of the bike is ridden by male, eighty to ninety percent actually. I feel city bike is too heavy for me. I can't move them to anywhere. I need lighter one. Think of it this way, if you hit somebody, you are more likely to survive. But why I want to hit someone? <laughs> <laughs> Never should be an issue. And you're not hitting people, you're, you're hitting car. It doesn't give you any leverage to have a heavier bike. Cool. So, because if you notice the um, rules about how to use the bike. If you are like a tourist, you just random use it. The five min the fifteen minutes is free. For members you have forty five minutes for free. So I think most people were managed to control the time under thirty minutes. That's why the prediction is all about like fifteen minutes, thirty minutes. So we first load a library called forecast and fit the fitting. Choose h equal to six and do a main. Um, you only need one line to do prediction by forecast package. And next, I'm going to do a GBM and compare how which one is better. But you can run this one and print out the result. It's only six numbers. So GBM is called gradient boosting machine. It's really, really popular. If you read all the blocks, like the Kaggle one, they have block, like they invite all the winners, all the first, second, third ranked person to write about their experience, how they compete in Kaggle. I would say half of the time they use GBM. It's really trendy. <coughs> And why? Because if you think about in, in reality, you have a really, really experienced doctor. He's 90% of the time is right. And you have a bunch of dummy young students, 100 of them. They make 60% of the time they make good decision. If you ag aggregate their opinion, they can actually be the really experienced doctor. That's why Dr. House has apprentice all the time. <laughs> you need dummy hats. 100 dummy hats be a really good one. So GBM is the same thing. You basically have multiple regression tree and you aggregate their final vote 
like if majority vote is saying, oh, this should be A, this should be B, we just listen to the majority of the vote. Before you can do GBM, you need to do extra things to extract the data-related feature. It just it won't happen just naturally based on the character of your data. So here we do a train data, take out the ratio, and do a transaction. You need to generate how the data point look like every five minutes. So if you read this carefully, um, it it's different five minutes each data point because we want to do lacted data series. And we want to combine our train, train and test data for more features. And we're separating them by whether it's a weekday or it's a non-weekday. So this tells you whether it should be different level. We factor them based on whether it's a workday. It's Saturday and Sunday. It, the, the pattern should be totally different, right? Okay, so um, we this step, we are turning all the times into time step. If you use Linux before, actually you can turn the whole thing into just a number. So that's how it works. We just calculate the timestamp based on the formula here. And this is the function how you can do a lacted delayed time series. Basically, it works like this. If you lack once, you have one and a. If you lack four times, you have four and a. So the data point just follow from one to the end. If you look here, here the lacked first one is the percentage ratio. It, the first line have most of NA, the second one have one data point, the third row have two data points. So basically you can build up your triangle for the elected pattern. So it should something look like this. So you don't need to uh, worry about this part because the model will handle it naturally. And Gradually, we build up the lactic triangle for our data set. And I have links for Wikipedia page and the package name for R. And if you want to read more, you can search for reading boosting machine and or just boosting model. So it's supervised learning, but it's really hard to find paper if you don't know exactly how it's called. Okay, I'm repeating why house need apprentice here. Mm. That's the final function. You can fit the data set into a GBM. Um, the most important parameter is here, like how many heads, how many apprentices you are getting in this model. Yes. So, you do something called a random forest. Mm -hmm. How is this different from that? It sounds like the hat is a random forest, but this one combining the boosting. Boosting is the majority voting part. Boosting is like the best algorithm of the shell. It always wins other algorithm because you have selections. Uh, because if you calculate actually the correct correct rate based on uh, statistics, like if you have 100 people, they only have 60% of correct rate. If you do a majority vote based on their opinion, the final correct rate would be bigger than 95%. So you do C or P 1 out of 100, P 2 out of 100 to calculate how much correction rate based on all combination of both. The final result would be better. Make sense? 
So you can find the best number of trade by gbm.perform. It tells us around 500 would be our best guess. As, because when you do trade, trade, it's very easy to overfit the model. You don't want to make your model exactly fit to the data set. Because if you do that, when the new data set come in, you won't be able to fit that one very well. You want to have a like little bit loose model. And you can grab the numbers by the parameter and do a pre prediction. This is the result from one data point. And we want to compare. No, it's fine. Thank you. Every day we have 288 data points. We want to predict next six data points the, with the data from previous week. So the whole week will be 2016 data points. And you can random select our, what are the data points you are comparing to. So this is the RMSE. It's like average all the errors. The lower, the better. Have you heard of RMSE? It's root mean square deviation. So which one is better? Oh, yeah. I put solution there. <sighs> These days, I'm not good at hiding the solutions. Different data point. We are comparing the because each of them predicts six data point. We're predicting the next thirty minutes. Okay. Each data point is five minutes. We can see GBM is slightly better than the time series. And um, we have another straightforward prediction, and which gives us better solution, can you guess? Something you can, some solution you can get without any cost, which can give you better precision and better result. We have done a lot of work. We download the data, we scrape it, we clean it up, we take out the missing data, we model them by different ways. But there is some way we don't need to do anything, and it beat all the model. <laughs> it's cheating. <laughs> no. Crazy No. Because we treat we already picked the best tree. We know we're not overfitting. We find the balance from the model. What's your guess? Why? Why you can have some solution with out of the box you don't need to do anything? What is it? Do you guys actually look up how many backend docs available before you go? Yeah, it's never right. It never right? Really it, it has been a debate because City Bike never released the timestamp of the data once they actually capture the data. Maybe they're saying it's five minutes ago, but in different station. Maybe it's 10 minutes ago, 11 minutes ago. So they just reject to release the timestamp, which make it really difficult. So I will give you some hint. What does this tell you? I just plot all the data about how many um, bikes will be available there. You notice there wasn't a big change, right? But the spikes is like very few. The majority of the data stay the same, which means five minutes. So the current the change. The change. So on average, there is very little change, but it's spiking. Like really busy time, you have big spike. People just took all the bike away. 
So it's, it's pretty unlikely that there are 10 bikes there that five people are going to come in. Uh, 10 people are going to come in five minutes and take all of them. Right? Yes, that's so. the moment everyone walk out the first subway yeah. in the morning, right? The rush hour. Yeah, the rush hour. I have to be like the very first train arriving at Penn Station at 6 in the morning. Like, it has to be like, it, 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 it's very difficult. Like, New York is, you know, you, get, you leave your door. So, there's, there's no real, like, five minute period that I can see. It. Maybe it's like a one hour period you can see the So, what does this, this tell you most of the time? The data doesn't change much. And that become our concern. So, how many data points didn't change? About this much. That means our model might be a problem. If you only check like this minute, how many bike will be there? This model will beat all the model you can possibly fit. Does that make sense to you? You're saying the last observation is your best prediction of the next observation. They outperform all the model you can possibly model because it's too stable. It only have certain spikes in order to beat like last minute prediction. You need to change your time series. You need to take out all the data points which is stable, which doesn't tell you any information. Like from 10 o'clock to 7 o'clock, they're really stable. Once you put them into your time series or GBM, make your model more sensitive to change. So why don't you just model the changes instead of modeling the level? But it's because if you want to do it in time series, it's much more work. Because time the way time series is set up, it requires a continuous data set. You can't just cut seven hours out and just cut all of them out. You need to do a lot of extra way to be able to beat the last five minutes prediction. I have a question in terms of, does anybody know what the policy is in terms of when they move the bikes? There are some rebalance scheduler. Because I'm sort of wondering whether that is contributed to, to it to some extent also. Because in other words, I you think have so. somebody looking at the data already and uh, and leaning against the what's going what's going on. Um so even if you get to Penn Station at six in the morning, they know that they have to they have to bring bikes in. So it's going to be more, it's going to be, it's abnormal. I, I doubt they would do that because no, that I time. See the, I see them bringing bikes in. It's, yeah, they're, it's But the, the traffic is crazy. They can't move to anywhere, the, the, the truck. They do have another bike. No, no, they have these four bikes that have four bikes in the back. You, by, by truck? By truck? Sure. No, no bike it, it's a bike trailer. Oh. They move them that way. I see. I didn't know they were doing that now. Because it's very inefficient, right? You can only I move know, five of them. Thing. But the point is, again, that they're looking at the data, they're trying to force the numbers down. So in other words, all your peaks are getting, getting smashed in toward the center. So you're, going to, you're abnormally stable, even beyond everything we've talked about. They didn't release like what time they do the rebalancing. So maybe those spikes are caused by their but the performance is triggered by the spikes. Yeah, that's in the. But so it has a time the, lag, correcting. right? Yeah, there's a lag, yeah. so that's why you have spikes. Like, mm -hmm. if, if the correction were instantaneous, there would be no spikes, right? But. Yeah, so, Rich, you want to see it, you want to see this bike, the, the, these spikes? Show the Penn Station around 6 o'clock. You see them there, and they're going out. Also, oh, I think the main problem, why the last five minutes prediction is doing so well because we give so much credit for those time point, it doesn't change much. We, if we want to do a fair comparison, we need to compare as those date points have big fluctuation, right? Spikes. That I think in that case, the modeling actually will work. But if you compete with someone or already have a lot of average uh, advantage, you won't win them, right? So, God, I think I can, I should look into it, like how really modeling can improve their prediction, take out all the stable data sets. Cool. So, a lot of people was thinking what kind of business you can do with Citibank. Like, can you return the Citibank to nearby stores, like 7-Eleven or any store? And they save it for you, and they return it for you, so you can pay them a visit. 
and spend some money there? Or can you schedule some nice bike ride for a group of friends? Yeah. <laughs> and design the trip. Like, what's the best bike trip in, in Manhattan, in Brooklyn? What time you should go there? How many friends you can bring? There are a lot of things. And there, a firm, there is a firm called Duck Sky. They, they do predicting modeling for rain down to minute. So they tell you whether it's going to win or stop winning in one minute. Um, the data is free. You, you should download and play with it. It's called Forecast IO. Oh, what did I do? Four. One of my students is going to present this algorithm. I'm not sure he can make it work, but let's see. The presentation is made first. You all welcome to. XY003? Yes. Ah. It's your turn to vote. So it's the May 1st. Mixed topic of open data. So they're doing election in Turkey vote, how to demonstrate their data, whether people are cheat or not, like based on the voting ratio. And how you can do path finding on Craigslist, how you can study Bloomberg data set, how you can profile the restaurant based on their inspection data set. I didn't teach it any of them to this, the project is about you need to try something on your own. So welcome to their presentation. I really hope Brian can make it work. Um, so if you search for Dark Sky, it's a mobile app. You can buy for iPhone or iPad. And they give you their data for free and see whether you can do a better work or not. I come across this app. So there is a link to their data set, Forecast.io. Dark Sky. It's an iPhone, iPad app. So I asked my friend, oh, I asked my student to do the same thing and turn the earth rolling. I'm not sure if you can do it because I don't know how to do it. If you have, if you went, if you have been Silicon Valley before, like the headquarter of Google, the, the moment you enter into their door, you will see some rolling earth like this with spikes. Like how many people is using their search engine down to this minute? It's super cool. So, um, so you can see what are the hints in humanity and prediction next minute. Oh, this is next hour, but they managed to do it for next minute. And what else I have here? Oh, I talk with people who have done uh, weather risk insurance, like they want to tell at what temperature how much rain, like little rain, you will still ride bicycle. So they have some comfortable index for riding. It's really prediction for how many, how many bikes will be there. Um, and also each station have interference with others. Because if you can't get any bike there, maybe you can go to nearest. So they have some interaction. You can do like hierarchical Bayesian modeling based on centers. Um, so you can play with the, you can find the source code for the Ruby on Rails app at here. Just download the whole package. You should be able to get this running. So this is the map. This is how many bike, bicycle will be there. It's a prediction, prediction modeling. And you have all the R code in the modeling. Cool. That's all I have for tonight. What else do you want to know?
Did I do a good job? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Did you ever try looking at the um, the stations on the on the border of the map? They are less popular. That's why they keep changing the location of the stations. Like the east side, the the side. What's the rebel card between Manhattan and New Jersey? Hudson. Hudson. They keep changing the station location. Try to make it popular. You can yeah, find the, the ones like on Atlantic Avenue or on 59th Street. If you look into all the historical data, you can use longitude, latitude to see how they move them around. They act. Okay. They actually review the station to make it more popular. Yeah, no, I was gonna say you probably find interesting seasonality on 59th Street and Atlantic Avenue and whatever. The, the, I don't know what the eastern border is. I'm so sure you you can find the seasonal trend like I did here, and you know where to get data and how to write their trend, right? Sure. <laughs> they pack the whole month's data on their website. You okay. just download the past seven months, eight months data. Cool. Guys, we have a tradition called moment of truth. You guys will vote for me. Always. You need two thirds to pass, or how does it work? I always pass, come on. <laughs> Is this for like R like nine 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 nine? No, it's for event. <laughs> so I know what kind of speaker you like, so I can invite more based on your taste, right? Guys, how can we do this? Guys, because I archive all the events, it's really funny to look back. Like you know who who eat the most. Like you really keep telling me I eat a lot. Because it's reflect in the picture. And you know how many people was there and whether it's a good one. Should you, should you spend time to review the videos, right? It tells you everything. One picture worth thousands words. In MongoDB data visualization by ggpod 2 second time. No jazz mixture mixed effect of R. So how you can figure out whether it's a mixed effect model and how to model it. Oh. How many of you been um, second class graduation? Uh, they, they, I start to invite them to write out what they did. Like Kim just write how you can analyze your Twitter data. How can you create your developed account? Um, pass your token. You can copy paste all the code from here. And he did a word cloud like this one. And you can turn this into different shape. Like I have an example. What was that? Sorry. Yeah. It's the nycdatascience.com. This is the one I made. You can turn into really beautiful things. And you can tell what's going on. Like if you search for Turkey or search for NYPD, it tells you all the bugs were. Because Twitter gives you the trendy top 500. Try them out. Everything is here. Guys, we're going to take a quick picture if you don't mind. If you mind, I don't mind you mind. <laughs> I do mind. <laughs> Sorry. Who can take a picture? Thank you, Jerry. Okay, I'm not, I'm not looking at you so we can vote on the space. I will look at this later. We're going to do two. One panorama and then one like square. This is good. Oh, yeah. This is awesome. This is not good. I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> I'm not okay, looking have, at you. <laughs> Hold on, wait, wait. There's a slow mo option. I don't have that on my. Ooh, you have old one. I do. Cool. Thank we you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that work. Yeah. We love you guys. You host more than 10 events already. <laughs> guys, I hope to have you in the party. We have yummy cakes. We have the most awesome t-shirt. And only sell for once per year.
May 19. After that, I will be gone for a month. So, no event. Shanghai, Taipei, Beijing. A lot of work. Thank you for coming tonight. And I will put up all the videos in case you want to learn again. You're leaving?